Hi, I'm Paul Reckwith, University of... <laughs> People tell me that I should be smiling more in my videos. So, if you take a pen or pencil and you put it in your mouth, and you'll know, walk around, talk, etc., it stretches the muscles of your mouth that are used in smiling. So it sends some neurotransmitters to your brain, makes you feel better, you know, makes people laugh around you. So I don't know, apparently it works. But anyway, you know, try it. So there's some missing charts. A report came out by BP and what's not in the report explicitly is very important. And it will make you rethink what you know about fossil fuels, the effect of renewable energies on reducing fossil fuels, etc. It's in the National Observer. So the report is here that it's referring to, the BP Global Report. Now this is a widely read report um, in the industry. Um, it talks, of, it's, a, it's a widely read energy report. So it's all about, um, you know, for example, primary energy. It's worth a read just to see, you know, the breakdown of the, of the energy. It talks about carbon emissions, talks about, you know, breaks it down into oil, natural gas, coal, renewables, hydro and nuclear and everything else. Okay, so uh, it's, uh, so just have a look at this article, bp.com. Um, okay, so the link is here. Okay, BP Statistical Review of World Energy. Okay, so let's talk about the charts, the key missing charts. So the author of this article, you know, Barry Saxifrage in Analysis and Energy, um, put together these charts based on the data from the report. So the first one is how much carbon polluting fuel is humanity burning? So the, this is a global fossil fuel burn here. Okay, so he generated these charts. So this is from 1990 to 2016. Okay, billions of tons of oil equivalent here. So going, you know, you can see a steady increase in this number. Slight dip here in, in the recession in 2009, but basically a steady increase that doesn't appear to be slowing down to me. Now these charts appear in visualcarbon.org, which is right here, visualcarbon.org, all kinds of graphs to try to uh, explain um, things. For example, this is transportation, um, you know, things in Canada, things in globally, all kinds of uh, stats on this is, these are the Canadian ones, but there's also international ones. So very good website. And what, what about the IPCC and the COPs and all of these things? Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the Climate of Parties. So the IPCC was established in 1989, late 1988 here. Now notice 1990 is where that oil chart starts. And then we have all of these different meetings and COPs. This is the Rio summit in 93. Um, and then as you go through the years, the Kyoto Protocol, very big one. Um, you know, you can just keep going up here to the present. Copenhagen, big one, Cancun, Durban. Okay, we're into the 2013. Um, and let's keep going. Okay, Lima, which I attended, and COP21, Paris, the historic Paris Agreement, Marrakesh last year. Next one is in Bula. Okay, so we've had these meetings globally to address this exact thing, and you can see how effective those meetings have been. The world has not been serious at all, and now we're in deep trouble with our fossil fuel emissions. So ever rising, all time record. So let's have a look at some of these other plots. Okay, so this is the slope of the previous curve, if you like. So the slope was smaller, and then it went ramped up quite a bit, and then it came back down again. So the curve is 
increasing slowly, increasing more rapidly, and then increasing more slowly, the curve I just showed you. So here we are here, this is matching the average from the 90s. This was the recession, a drop, but it didn't really reduce overall burn because the next year more than made up for it. Okay, so we're burning fossil fuels like there's no tomorrow. This is the fossil fuel share of global energy. Okay, so how much of a dent does nuclear and solar and wind and everything else producing energy? Okay, well, fossil fuels was 88% of global energy, dropping to 86 in 2016. So it's losing 1% share per decade, right? This number is dropping, you know, about 1% per, per decade. Like, so we're ruled by fossil fuels. Let's have a look at the breakdown into oil, gas, and coal, say just in the last five years. Are we really at a turning point in our fossil fuel use? So this is the first one, oil, the biggest one. This is global energy use change over the last five years, from 2011 to 2016. Biomass here, solar here, wind here, and hydro here. Oil, look at oil. Okay, so, you know, you can talk about how well we're doing with green energy replacing fossil fuels, and it just doesn't seem to be valid. Okay, these curves should be turning up and oil should be turning down. We're not seeing that happening. Oil is increasing the fastest. Okay, this is million tons of oil equivalent. Okay, these are horrifying charts. These, this is the reality of, of the um, situation. Okay, let's have a look at gas. So we go to the next chart, and this is a repeat of the previous chart. Okay, but we've just added We've added gas now. So oil was this lower black one coming up here. And gas is this one here with the kink in it here. You know, so a slow down and then an increase here. Okay, so oil and gas are way ahead and the slope is much larger than all of the other things. Okay, so we're in an oil and gas and we're in a fossil fuel dominated world. I mean, this is very, very clear evidence to that effect. Let's look at coal. Okay, at least coal is falling. Or is it? Well, let's have a look at the data on coal. So here we go, coal. So this is brilliant, right? This is fantastic. You know, it looks like coal you know, was, uh, you know, peaked about here, 2013 to 2014, and then dropped down very, very quickly, right? Now, when you burn coal, coal has the highest carbon concentration, over 90%. So when you burn coal, you produce um, a lot of um, CO2, okay? There's also a lot of impurities in it, like sulfur dioxide. So when you burn coal, there's the sulfur in the coal, rather, turns into sulfur dioxide, and that goes into the lower atmosphere, and that causes all kinds of grief, all kinds of deaths from air pollution, etc. Yet when we talk about putting a bit of sulfur dioxide into the upper atmosphere, a fraction of what we do from, you know, about the amount from a single coal plant, the world's up in arms. That doesn't make sense. I'm talking about solar radiation management. Okay, so is this coal number accurate? So... If you look, there's reasons to be skeptical, four maddeningly compelling reasons to be skeptical. One, the atmosphere shows no sign of reduction of CO2. Two, the history. China has huge underreporting problems in the past. Maybe that's going on now. Human nature, there's growing pressure to underreport coal and there's no way to catch it, or it's very difficult to catch it. Money, new coal plant construction is booming worldwide. So let's look at each of these four points. So the first point, our atmosphere shows no sign of it. Okay, I've shown people this graph. This is the increase of CO2 concentration in the atmosphere. This is in parts per million. Okay, look at this. 2016 and 2015 were record high levels. 
three parts per million increase of CO2 in the atmosphere. The only other thing that came close was 1998, when we had a strong El Nino year, the oceans didn't absorb as much CO2. Okay, there was also a strong El Nino year in 2016. We thought this number would be much higher, but it settled down about the same as the 2015 number. Okay, so is coal being burned, not being reported, contributing to this number? You know, maybe we should hope for that because then we can record it correctly, reduce it, and get this number down. Otherwise, this number could be representing, as I mentioned in the past, a failure of the sinks, a failure of the ocean to absorb carbon, a failure of biomass, both terrestrial and phytoplankton, uh, in the oceans to absorb, to act as carbon sinks. We could be losing our carbon sinks in this number, um, resulting in this number being extremely high, and that would be extremely worrying. Okay, point, this is the CO2 in our atmosphere. Okay, this is from 1960 to 2030. This is the growth. Okay, in the 2010s, 2010s, the average was 2.44 ppm per year. In the 2000s, 1.97 parts per million per year. 1.55 in the 1980s and 90s, and 1.28 in the 1970s, and before the slope was 0.85, under one part per million per year in the 1960s. Remember, 2015 and 2016 were both three parts per million. This curve is rising exponentially. The CO2 in the atmosphere, that's what the climate cares about. It also means the CO2 is rising exponentially in the oceans because half of what goes in the atmosphere is absorbed in the oceans. This is just what's so half of it, this is only reflecting half of our emissions, the other half's going in the ocean. Not a good situation. Is China underreporting emissions? Well, in 2013, the government revised their error, accounting error. They revised the estimate upward by 600 million tons per year, a lot of coal. If you convert that to oil equivalent, it gives you this slice here. If China has underreported and corrects, this curve will bend right up to here. Okay, that's not very encouraging. There's growing pressure to underreport and no way to catch it. Okay, not just in China. Think of the Volkswagen emissions cheating scandal. This is a highly regulated industry, the automotive industry. They cheated in this highly regulated industry that required verification tests. They cheated on their emissions. Um, you know, there's a cottage industry in China to help fake these numbers of coal. About one third of manufacturers in northern China had tampered with emissions data to avoid heavy penalties. Okay, uh, coal burning, pressure to cut back. Um, we need a way to verify that nations have made their promised carbon cuts. The current inability is a big problem. It's a loophole in the Paris Agreement. Okay, China has refused to accept international monitoring. Okay, number four, the global boom in new coal plants. If we've really turned a point on coal burning, why are investors pouring hundreds of billions of dollars into increasing global coal power capacity by 43%? Okay, this is from a German group that has tracked in a coal tracking database. And it was also mentioned in the New York Times. Okay, so talk is cheap. Now, this is a real problem. You know, put a carbon tax on, you know. Do, but, like, this is a negative carbon tax. These are subsidies. This is money that is going to fossil fuels, right? Public finance spending on energy. So we got Japan, China, Korea, USA. Black is fossil fuels. Other energy, like, is, is the orange and clean energy is the green. These are subsidies. Look at the subsidies on fossil fuels, 80% almost in Japan, 90% in China, 96 in Korea, 57 in the US. It's huge mega billions of dollars is being financed to pollute, to, to go to fossil fuels. And this is why it's continuing to go up. Unless we break the back of this, then we're gonna we're gonna go to a very dark place. I don't I don't see um, this is very very grim and very very depressing statistics. So thank you for listening.